All right, guys, it is Paul, combat veteran, MMA fighter, YouTuber, and we are back with the next installment of Luton 09's How to Become a Space Marine, Space Marine Creation and Recruitment. Let's get into it. If all these criteria are approved, the neophyte recruit will now become a Space Marine Scout, or in some cases a full Space Marine Initiate. They will live isolated in the Space Marine Chapter's Fortress Monastery on the homeworld, save for any approved missions. The individual will be tutored on battle methods, tactics, psycho-conditioning, values and the history of his chapter. The reason these early Marines are titled Initiates is because it is still unknown as to whether they will even survive to the final end process of becoming a full battle brother. 19 organs grown from the chapter gene seed will be implanted to the neophyte initiate, some are transplants and others are grown in the trainee marine's body. The gene seed will also- Okay, so here's sort of an interesting fact, is that, you know, with modern transplantation, right, modern organ transplants, um, one of the biggest problems they have is rejection, right? The immune system is going to look at that kidney, that liver, that lung, that heart, and it's going to see different DNA. It's going to see to the body alien DNA. And so naturally your body will attack that unless you spend the rest of your life on incredibly powerful immunosuppression drugs, essentially switching off your immune system. Um, now, in order to, you know, in the far future, right, and actually in the not very far future, one of the medical technologies that people think we are somewhat close to developing is uh, lab-grown organs that share you your DNA sequence, that share the patient's DNA sequence. So instead of relying on a transplanted heart, someone with heart failure and enough, of course, time will actually have their stem cells transplanted onto um, an inert scaffolding and will grow them into a heart, into a functioning heart that your body views as indistinguishable from its own. Now, here's where things get kind of weird, is in this scenario, right, you've got these space marines who are receiving f a a to the body alien DNA and a lot of it. Now, here's so that right there should be a problem. Now, we also have, and this is present day technology, uh, what's called CRISPR. And this is new gene editing technology that is able to actually go into a cell and pop in new genetic code, fundamentally changing the nature of that cell. And when you do that on a cell and you include in that genetic code, of course, the need to replicate, you can actually spread a second set of genetic instructions through a body. So right now, obviously, it, 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 using CRISPR on people is pretty uh, frowned upon. Um, I believe there may be some trials looking at genetic diseases like cystic fibrosis, um, where they try to use healthy cells um, to sort of crowd out the in, uh, cells with the genetic mutation. But of course, when it's an entire body with that DNA, it's pretty tough. Um, there's also discussions about using it for things like um, controlling the spread of, for example, mosquitoes. If you're able to inject mosquitoes with this CRISPR, um, they may become uh, sterile and unable to reproduce, and you would kill off a mosquito population, um, or you would alter their DNA so that um, diseases like dengue or malaria can't be transmitted. There's a lot of promise to this technology. Um, so maybe, my guess would be in the 40, and lore, lore people, man, you know, I depend on you guys to let me know. Um, my guess would be is that they actually are going to use like a, a CRISPR type technology to first alter the fundamental DNA of the Space Marine. And once that DNA is aligned with the gene seed, then they are going to stick those new organs in it. Um, or some combination where like they stick the scaffolding of the organ and they stick the uh, CRISPR altered DNA code and the body sort of grows the organs themselves or they pull out the organs and are like, okay, we're going to build you this third lung, but it's going to have your genetic code stuck in it. Of course, then it gets even weirder because you're like, well, why do they all have the same mutations? Why do some of them turn into werewolves? Um, 
you know, or drink blood or whatever. Uh, Warhammer definitely did a lot of hand waving with the genetics. But I guess the point of the story is that it's not actually as far fetched as you might believe. Literally, I think um, the las guns are probably more far fetched than this sort of uh, biological genetic modification. So adapt and change and grow the individual's body to become the giant size of a space marine towering over ordinary mortal humans. Much of the body chemistry will be fundamentally reworked during this time, and the gene seed contains genetically engineered viral machines which rebuild the body to the template created by the emperor. Any that is crazy. It, so literally viral machines rebuilding the body, that is what uh, CRISPR is. It uses a virus or a sort of virus-like mechanism to insert that new DNA into cells and then those cells reproduce, or if they're engineered to. Some, sometimes the CRISPR is just engineered to be like, your cells only have the duration of their own life, they don't reproduce, they have this different DNA, they perform their instructions, and then they die. But that's crazy that, here we go, the, uh, the, the, at the time that this was written, I don't know, maybe the 80s or 90s, right, this was pretty fantastical technology, and now here we are in 2021, and we have it. It's, it's, it's out there. Any implant has a potential to fail, and this rejection will automatically end and probably kill the initiate. As if the odds weren't stacked against them already, this further thins down the number who survive to the end of this arduous process. In brief, the 19 implanted or grown organs to become a full space marine are as follows. First, a secondary heart to increase blood supply and capacity. It can also pump steroids and extra adrenaline for battle situations. Oh, okay, interesting. So it looks like they have the ranges of when these organ implantations happen, and it looks like they happen over the span of up to eight years. Okay, that's... um. That's probably actually not super unrealistic. Um, again, eight years is, is more or less the duration of puberty in men. So, um, yeah, I don't think that's actually a crazy timeline. Um, yeah, so the other thing that's interesting, and I think these organs are going to deal with it, is big human beings don't last, don't live as long as small human beings. Um, the average life expectancy of a basketball player, uh, again, or a professional basketball player, I should say, uh, these are generally men and generally over um, six and a half feet tall, they actually don't live as long as the average person. I think only into the 50s or 60s um, on average. Uh, you also, of course, have NFL linebackers who famously have a life expectancy in the low 50s, and those, again, are almost are all men, and they are recruited explicitly because they're so big because they're over 300 pounds. And it's true that, you know, obviously 300 pounds of fat, 300 pounds of muscle, very different things, but at the end of the day, your heart, your lungs, your circulatory system, um, just your general metabolism just has to work really hard to be to maintain 300 pounds of human being, whether it's a, a fat human being or a fit human being. Um, and that that that's a huge metabolic weight. So it sounds like having extra organs, uh, reinforced bones, um, extra lungs, those are all things that you would basically need to just like scale up to ensure that this new human you're creating, this new this new, really, let's be honest, this new human-like creature you're creating um, is able to metabolize and survive despite being 8 feet tall and 350 pounds. The osmodular or iron heart, this strengthens and grows the skeleton of a space marine so that his bones will contain a ceramic-based mineral which is added to an initiate's diet. After a few years, the space marine skeleton will be exponentially stronger than a normal human. The rib cage will have become fused to a solid bone plate, providing extra protection for internal organs. The biscopia is implanted within the chest cavity, and this increases skeletal muscular development, essentially muscle density. The hemastomen assists in carrying oxygen and nutrients more efficiently throughout the blood. It also assists in regulating the second and third implants. The Laramans organ is also placed in the chest and manufactures synthetic Laramans cells. These serve like ordinary human blood platelets, but faster 
and more efficient. When a Space Marine is wounded, they form fully healed scar tissue in seconds, preventing hemorrhaging. This ability can make Space Marines appear invincible as they take wound after wound. Anything other than the most catastrophic of injuries is going to leave them still standing. The catalepsian node is implanted in the back of the cerebrum. It allows space marines to avoid the need for sleep, entering them into a form of ongoing coma, allowing their brain the ability to systematically recharge by individual parts at a time. This enables them to stay on duty for hundreds of hours. Ah, okay, yeah, this is this is sort of answering that question. I mean, again, I think in the lore, right, these are meant to make them more battle ready. Um, but in practical terms, a lot of these organs would, I imagine, be necessary in order to have a, again, a 400-pound person uh, live, live, you know, an unlimited number of years, um, but at least live long enough that their body doesn't, like, start to break down faster than a normal human's. Um, it is also interesting, I just want to point out that, you know, they have to grow uh, you know, a space marine isn't just like the same regular frame, right? They grow taller, they grow wider. Um, so it's interesting that they have this stuff that makes their bones harder. Um, I, I again, I'm imagining that that in the universe, um, they have to do something to allow the bones to continue to grow. And in regular human beings, those are called growth plates, right? They're soft parts of the bone that continue to expand uh, through the puberty process and then harden once you've reached your adult size, whatever that is. Um, so you would have to actually somehow re-incentivize those to grow, um, which is which is I, I'm not sure. I think. HGH doesn't do that. I think it only does soft tissues, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong, right? There's the classic, like, big head HGH look. Um, so maybe, maybe those exaggerated facial features are face bones expanding. The seventh implant is the preomnor. It functions as a decontamination chamber above the stomach and will analyze ingested materials, neutralizing any organic or inorganic toxins. It also enables the studies to eat materials for sustenance that would kill ordinary humans. The omophagia is implanted in the upper spinal cord. It absorbs information through ingested DNA and RNA related to memories. The purpose is to gain tactical or survival information by eating animals or life forms indigenous on a planet. In addition to a sec- Yeah, okay, that part's uh, not super re realistic. Um, I don't even know how that would work even under the loosest, like, even conceptually, right? Like, the only way I could think about it is it is if it functioned like a tongue, right? The way that human beings, you know, the reason we've evolved things taste good or things taste bad is as a means of detecting uh, toxic substances before we ingest them. Um, but that's not reading things at a genetic level. That's just tasting them. Um, and having different chemicals bind to different parts of your tongue to tell you, hey, this is sweet, saccharin, this may be good to eat and nutritious. Hey, this is salty, fatty, it may be good to eat. Hey, this tastes like pretty gross, this is probably toxic, you shouldn't ingest it. Second heart, space marines also have multi lungs as their ninth implant. Three, in fact. This is to give them extra oxygen absorption in thin air environments. In a toxic environment, their ordinary lungs are shut off to allow the third lung to act as a filter for any necessary toxins. The tenth adaptation is the ocular lobe. It's a gene seed adaptation that enhances eyesight along the optic nerves. This gives increased accuracy of vision and increased low light sight ability. Uh, okay. Um. All right, real quick, just want to take a sec, and before I weigh in on the insanity of the oculobe, um, guys, be sure to hit like on the video, man. I'm a small channel. I, this really helps me out. It tells the algorithm I'm making good content. Check out the merch store. You can see I'm rocking my Kate, my Units of the Imperium t-shirt um, that you guys can get at my merch store. Um, there's the other shirt, of course, that the artist did. Uh, I've got the mugs. Um, also, be sure to follow my Instagram, second channel, Patreon. Uh, links are all down below. Okay, got away on this oculobe thing. So, okay, low light vision, right, 
we we use vision enhancement, right? Vision can be enhanced only through a couple of ways, right? And one is to absorb more light. Um, that is simple. Your pupils dilate, right? In, in humans, right, our pupils get larger. We take in more light and in a low light environment, it enables us to see better, right? This is why, of course, when you're in your room and you turn off the lights abruptly, it feels very dark. But when you wake up in the middle of the night in the same room, often you can see a little bit. And that's a function of your pupils dilating. Um, in the military, they actually teach us that if you're navigating at night and you see a car or the bright light of a jet or a headlight or something else, that you actually should cover one eye as it passes so that you don't lose your night vision entirely. And then as it passes, you at least take it off and you have at least one eye that hasn't, um, that's, whose pupil hasn't retracted. Uh, that said, you would not use the optic nerve to do it. You uh, could increase the photosensitivity of the eye itself maybe that's what they mean um, or of course you could make the eyes bigger better able to dilate um, it'd be interesting if you know imagine a space marine whose eyes are entirely black pupils in order you know in a low light environment that would be pretty creepy and kind of cool um, yeah the other ways we do night vision um, is to detect longer. We, we don't get more light by grabbing more of the light that we see, but we actually start to reach for light on the other ends of the visual spectrum. So on one hand, we have like thermal vision, right? The ability to see uh, heat signatures um, in addition to regular signatures. Um, and that can be really effective at night. And in the other side, we have um, the uh oh my gosh uh, this is infrared vision this is probably like ultraviolet like trying to detect light on the far pull in light sources or energy sources from the far side of the spectrum right the kind of blue side of the spectrum so to speak um i don't know how mature this technology is but definitely the infrared vision enhancement um is is huge right so Again, I don't know if I'm sure in fantasy Warhammer universe this all works, um, but that's how it would probably have to work in the real world. Lyman's ear is not simply better for more accurate hearing, it enables Marines to resist ordinary human dizziness and for them to be able to filter out white noise and sonic attacks. The Sasan membrane allows a Space Marine to enter a state of suspended animation. This can enable mortally wounded Marines to survive until help or an apothecary's arrival. This hibernation period has been known to be able to last for anything as long as half a century. Melanochrome alters. Yeah, that would. That's that's more than a membrane, man. That I. I don't even know what that would look like. I mean, even I couldn't even theorize as to how that would work. Uh, maybe like somehow secreting like a resin that just did just. It somehow like freezes everything in place um sort of like the dinosaurs encoded in amber maybe um or just like a, a an exaggerated version of like a bear's hibernation just like slow metabolism to 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 virtually nothing um but even then right you're gonna run the risk of like tissues getting necrotic um cells dying from lack of oxygen um, there's a certain like lower limit even uh, that just you have to do to maintain something that constitutes like being alive. The pigments in the skin cells allowing Astartes to shield himself from dangerous radiation and heat. Different levels of this in effect can cause physical differences between chapters such as the very pale skin of the blood angels or the darker skin of the salamanders. Okay, that's interesting. That's the thing that regular human biology does. Um, obviously, in response to radiation from the sun, we tan. Um, we believe that human, a lot of human skin tone variation um, evolved in response to more or less uh, sun-filled environments. Um, and, you know, as you know, in southern latitudes, right, the sun is more directly overhead and its rays uh, don't just feel stronger, they are stronger because of their ability, the less is... Less ultraviolet radiation is reflected or refracted by the, um, the air in the atmosphere, whereas at northern latitudes, a lot of that ultraviolet radiation will get refracted, you know, um, bounce off and not hit you. So 
uh, now it's sort of a liability, right? People that look like me, we've got to keep uh, wear our hats, especially now that I'm bald. Um, you know, it's it's sort of a pain, um, but it's important. You know, skin cancer avoidance is uh, uh, worth it. Beats beats dying. Um, yeah, could it stop radiation? Um, well, the problem with radiation is that it's the particles, right? The um, you know, so-called X-rays or gamma rays, right? They're so small. Their vibrations are so small that they can actually, the reason they cause so many cancers is they vibrate at just the right frequency so that when they hit a cell, it'll actually start to, boom, not kick off individual strands of DNA. So again, you multiply that by millions and millions of little gamma ray bursts coming off a radioactive area, hitting your body, hitting cells, knocking off amino acids here and there, and it actually will mess up your DNA pretty badly. Um, so could you evolve a substance that would protect your cells from that? Um, may maybe, maybe you'd have to like have, I'm guessing like a, again, maybe like a membrane on your skin that it secretes. That would be my best theory. Um, yeah, that'd be my best theory is that you, your, your body would have to like secrete a membrane that is somewhat resistant to radiation. Um, or that, yeah, that somehow, that somehow has a blocking function is like really dense. Maybe some sort of lead like like a like a chemical that's like a lead salt maybe i don't know the olytic kidney filters blood to further remove toxins that have been ingested in combination with the seventh organ it is best not to think of this though like an ordinary kidney as this organ functions to assist in removing toxins before they have passed through any normal process of absorption otherwise it wouldn't be very useful it also helps to regulate the advanced circulatory system and other organs the neuroglottis in the mouth allows a marine to biochemically analyze things by taste or smell or determine if something is poisonous or safe despite their advanced organs the that's exactly what your tongue and nose do by the way I I'm sure this is like it's a space marine so it's like a million times as effective but yeah that's that's just a super tongue and a super nose this could still be very useful for a variety of purposes and it can also enable them to track targets much like a canine. The mucronoid is implanted in the nervous system and if activated through an external treatment will cause the Astadi skin to secrete a waxy substance. This will cocoon them to protect them in situations of extended suspended animation, even the vacuum of space or- Called it. Yep. You just gotta- it, 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 yeah, yeah. Secrete a resin, preserve yourself. Um, yeah, again, I'm sure someone more medically qualified than me could absolutely tell you why this is complete BS. Or other temperature extremes. The Betcher's gland consists of two glands implanted in the mouth. These allow the studies to use their saliva as a corrosive acid when consciously activated. This could enable them to corrode bars if they were held captive or remove doors from their hinges. It also can assist them in eating difficult to break down substances. Some marine chapters have found that this organ no longer functions or has become less effective over time. The progenoid glands or the... Okay, I'm just going to point out, imagine you're a guardsman and you're on a planet and you're eating your, like, gross rations and then you're watching Astartes, like, gr peel the bark off a tree and then they all spit on it and they start chewing on it and just eating it wholesale. You'd be like, what the hell am I watching? You'd lose your damn mind. And also, lore experts, can they even do, like, inorganic stuff? Like, could they just take, like, a rusted chunk of brick and just dissolve it and bite down on it and get, you know, s some some sort of sustenance from that at an atomic level? The gene seeds are the critical organs of a space marine. They're implanted into the neck and chest cavity and serve as reproductive glands to allow their DNA to be collected upon death and safeguard the continuity of the chapter. Apothecaries of a space marine chapter will cultivate germ cells from the progenoid glands to create the 19 organs of a space marine, or some of them because some are grown within the space marine themselves. The final organ is the black carapace, otherwise called the interface. This material is implanted under the skin of the chest with the now shell-like ribcage. Fibred bundles then grow inward and interlink with the space marine's nervous system. 
points for these bundles are pre-cut by apothecaries and form neural connection points. The function of these are to allow a space marine to interface with the heavy power armour, or as some would have you believe, the armour's machine spirit. These connections enable faster reaction and manoeuvrability, without this space marines would lumber around very much encumbered by the heavy armour they wear. It's worth remembering that this whole process probably sounds heavily traumatic, but consider that it ideally happens when the young Neophyter initiates between the ages of about 10 to 12 years old, and should be then completed by age 18. Many are going to suffer critical or multiple organ failure during the process. The penalty, or arguably mercy for this, is usually euthanasia, although conversion to a servitor for the chapter is sometimes an option, depending on chapters and their needs. Again, for those families who never see their sons again, in some cases, it's probably for the best. All they need to know is, he's serving the Imperium. Now more recently, since the involvement of Belisarius Call of the Mechanicum, Primaris Marines are a new breed of superhuman Astartes. Under instruction from Robert Gulliman, Primaris Astartes are only created from the gene seeds of Loyalist Primarchs. They contain three additional organs, and their gene seed is considerably more genetically stable. Gulliman had instructed Call to develop these new organs with the goal of creating the Primaris. And their additional organs are the sinew coils. This enables the sinew of a Primaris Astartes to be durametallic, contracting with immense force, gifting them extreme strength and his body further resilience. Alright, that's just weird, man. I was thinking it was going to be like tougher, thicker sinews, and I will say that one of the most common injuries that you see in MMA are these sort of tendon and type injuries, right? Because obviously you have the muscle, which can be very strong, but tendons don't develop in the same way. Like they toughen over time, um, but they don't necessarily get big and strong, but the tendons are what connects that muscle to bone. So they are really, really sometimes surprisingly fragile, even in really high level athletes. So that would make a ton of sense to reinforce those, um, that body part. This increased strength will literally enable them to crush the skulls of their enemies with bare hands. The Magnifact, and this small lobe is inserted to the brain cortex. It secretes a hormone to increase the body's growth functions, with the goal of also intensifying further functions of the other implanted organs. Apparently, this organ is in fact half of the Immortus gland, the god-maker gland of the Primarchs. For undisclosed reasons, Call was only able to discover the right half of this gland, not the full gland itself. The left half had been fully eradicated from Imperial records by either the Emperor himself or others unknown and third, the Belisarian Furnace. This organ lies dormant and connects to both a marine's hearts. In times of immense physical stresses, it expels chemicals simulating combat stimulants, increasing the regrowth of tissue, bone and muscle. This is a short-term use organ and requires time to recharge after using. Okay, wow, that was an insane wild list of organs of fake organs. Um, yeah, a lot of them seem like, again, really intense, and uh, I gotta say, um, having listed all of them, I don't think it would be possible to finish transplantation, you're 18 years old, um, because in a lot of cases, the problem wouldn't be so much biological, I'm sure it's biologically possible, but you're talking about entirely new parts of the brain that need to be rewired to be like, okay, what does a poisonous food taste like when it's in my secondary stomach, right? What does a good food taste like when it's in my secondary stomach? How does, what do I, how do I learn when I put a piece of tyranid in my mouth to, to understand its DNA, right? Like, what does it feel like? Just like as a person, you know, as a kid, right, we have to spend yeah, our, our tongues are fully developed, you know, in a couple of years, but we have to spend the next, you know, 10 learning the words for uh, different types of food, how they taste, does how to describe that taste, what does that taste mean in context, right? What is taste, what is something that tastes good or bad that I like or don't like? What is the difference between a 
food that I find unappealing, and something that's toxic. These are things that we have to learn consciously in a lot of cases. So to do that for like four more organs would take years and years and years. Again, they don't have anything else to do. Maybe the Astartes really make a point of training them up as they get these new organs, but it certainly sounds like a huge challenge. Okay, thank you guys for staying all the way till the end. Um, I appreciate it as always. Thank you to everyone who watches, hits the like button, um, weighs in in the comments, um, and of course my Patreon, one, one, one person right now, but you know, soon to be more. Um, thank you guys, and I will see you next time.